Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. Um, I've got some emails about this Polaris 800 and a couple of them said uh, you should, should match port the cases. Well, we, we already had that in mind and I'm glad you guys are watching and definitely keep the comments coming. I love them. I look forward to reading this stuff every morning. What we did is we went ahead and assembled the bottom end. We rebuilt the crankshaft. Uh, you're not going to see a video on that. And um, it's pretty straightforward putting a crank in these things. They just split at the at the uh, center line, and uh, I use 1194 case bond, and that's going to work fine. Uh, so we're going to put the top end on it. We're match ported at the top. We ported our cylinders, and what I like to do, I use these little bottle like this to keep the oil from getting contaminated, and um, I'm just going to shoot a little oil. I oiled the rest of the crankshaft. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit just get some oil on these bearings here's our new pistons uh, we got these from Weisco obviously there's a trademark on it and uh, we're going to check our cylinders we've cleaned the power valves in the cylinder and did all the porting those things are in bags ready to go and uh, we're going to check and make sure we've got proper piston to cylinder wall clearance next what we're going to do next is check our piston to cylinder wall clearance. I went ahead, I took my star at 3 to 4 mic, measured the piston. Uh, Weisco was recommending a clearance of 5.5 thousandths. So we opened up the micrometer, took our bore gauge, and set it. So zero, which is where the arrow is, is going to represent proper piston clearance on this particular model. So what I'm going to do is just go in and check this cylinder. Make sure everything's going to be good. I measured both pistons. Good job by Weisco there. Exactly the same size. And then you always want to measure it 90 degrees in a few spots too. And make sure that everything's going to come into, into play. You don't want to mess around with piston clearance. Five and a half sounds like a lot. Uh, Weisco knows what they're doing. If you run less than that, you're going to have big problems with the skirts on these pistons. So I'm confident at this point that the piston to cylinder wall clearance is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and assemble the top end. And we'll show you how we do that. First thing we're going to do is load our top end bearings in. Uh, what I did is um, clean these out with brake cleaner. Make sure there's no factory schmeg on there. And I'm just going to take my... Uh, a can of two-stroke oil and throw a nice coat of oil on these things. Next step is to install them into the top of the rods. Got the top end bearings on the connecting rods. The next thing I'm going to do, I got my brand new pistons here. I'm going to take a couple seconds and just uh, I'm really going to feel for any burrs in here and I'm not going to touch it unless I have to and usually I don't have to but Weisco makes a lot of pistons and uh, we get to check them you should check anything you're putting in your motor anyway and I'm just checking making sure you know there's no burrs here so that's the next step make sure that you're fine with burrs on the pistons again checking my parts that I received here I took the uh, piston pins cleaned them off And I'm just making sure I don't have any burrs in here. These are moving nicely. Next step, we're going to prep our pistons to uh, get installed into the engine. And uh, we're going to put the, uh, the uh, circlips in here. And on this particular motor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the clips on the inside because I want to put the pin in from the outside and that way I'm going to have easy access to putting the clips in. So something like this, any twin really, just put the clips in here and we'll show you how we do that. Alright, we're going to put the first clip in, again on the inboard side of this end. And what I like to do is put the pin in first and drop the clip in here. And then just grab it right here. Just flow it over right into its spot. Obviously, I mean, absolute importance. You check this. You make sure you've got this in the groove all the way around. And my opening 
is on the bottom, the bottom of the top. You never want these openings here or here because of the, the inertia of the motor going up and down. It's just one extra precaution that you got to take. Uh, it's a possibility that clip might pop out. So um, that's how we do that and I'll go ahead and do it on the other piston and then we'll put this thing together. My cylinder bore is coming out at uh, 3 inches, 348 thousandths. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the end gap on the rings. Uh, what happens is as the rings get hot, they uh, expand upon e e each other and you don't want the ends of them touching. You want them almost touching. I mean, file fit rings are great. I, I wish somebody would actually come out with these things and if someone is, I don't know about it, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to check the ring end gap and that is the space between these rings inside of the bore when the cylinder is cold. The formula for calculating this is you take a bore diameter, you multiply it by .004 and that will give you an accurate dimension of what your minimum ring end gap can be. And here's how I do this. So just take the ring, drop it into the cylinder, I use my piston, and all this is doing is leveling it out. For this particular application, it's, um, I think it came out to 13.34 thousand, so I'm going to use a 14 feeler gauge and just make sure that I'm not going to have any problems. And sure enough, that slides right in there. I'll check the next one. Same thing, right in. I'll check the next cylinder. I went ahead and installed the rings on both pistons. Um, just a note, and again, you may not know this, and I know it's, it's pretty redundant, but when you're assembling these motors uh, with these white coat pistons, these arrows go towards the exhaust. You have pins in the back of the pistons. These go towards the intake. And these rings, they call these semi-keystone rings, what these do is they lock over the groove, but all these rings are marked top. You have to make sure you install them correctly. If you install a ring backwards, uh, you're going to have catastrophic damage. So just pay attention to that. Usually the rule of thumb is any ring, the numbers go up on top or the, uh, if it says top, that's where you want to go. And usually some rings in automotive applications, they have dots and that always indicates top. So you got to be careful and make sure you install the rings the right way. I went ahead and oiled the uh, pin bores in the piston and arrow pointing forward again. My rings are installed. I uh, oiled the pin and I'm just going to install these pistons next. And the next step is going to be to install the clips. Right, if you recall, we took our uh, C-clips, put them in on the inboard side, so it's going to be ease of installation on the outside. Uh, one piece of advice I can give you, and I can't stress this enough, just get some clean paper towels, whatever you got, and put it inside of here. The worst thing that can happen at this point, you're almost done, you're almost ready to put your motor back in. Worst thing that can happen is drop one of these clips inside of the cases, and you're right back to square one. So. We're just going to do the same thing we did, load the clips the same way, opening either facing straight up or straight down. Okay, we have our uh, wrist pin retaining clips in there. The next thing I'm going to do is just uh, an oil this piston a little bit. I like to put a light coat on the rings. Um, I know. You know, there's some builders out there, they actually take these things and dip it in two-stroke oil, and I just don't think that's the right thing to do. I think when you do something like that, you're going to have problems with breaking, so just a light coat of oil. Uh, it doesn't see anywhere near this much oil when it's running anyway, and I'm going to go ahead and um, lubricate the cylinder as well. Power valves have all been lubricated, everything's clean, and then we'll pop a cylinder on this thing. Ready to put my cylinder on, and uh, what you got to do is make sure that these rings line up in the pins, and what I like to do is just squeeze them. I don't use a tool to do this, I just kind of line them up, give them a little squeeze. And just get my cylinder in position. 
drop it right down on top of the engine block. And we'll go ahead and get this seated and we'll do the next one.